For the Lord's table, I'd like for us to consider some more questions and scripture. Some of these we've already uh, discussed a little bit. <clears throat> the first, first question in scripture is when God asked Adam, where art thou? This is a very, a very piercing question. It's actually, all these, these questions that God asked in the first, uh, in, in considering the fall of Adam and Eve, are piercing questions that Adam and Eve could not possibly give a complete answer to these questions. <clears throat> but it certainly uh, causes us to think. Looking back on the fall of man, <clears throat> we can we can answer these questions ourselves in great detail. We can. We can give extended answers to this question. Adam, where art thou? <clears throat> he had sinned, and he knew it. He was naked, he was ashamed, and he was hiding from God. That's where Adam was at. And then to Eve, he says another very piercing question. What is this that thou hast done? Oh, we could go into great detail about that. <clears throat> They had sinned against the God that had made them. They brought sin into the world. Adam and Eve had caused, I just recently been thinking about this, the, the depth of what Adam and Eve did. That, you know, God took six days in making the entire creation. <clears throat> Adam and Eve ruined it all. He, everything God made, he declared it was good. It was very good what God did. And we, we know later on from what the Apostle Paul says in, in Romans that uh, God had intended that man had dominion over his creation. And somehow there was going to be some kind of cooperative interaction between man and the rest of the creation. And it, well, we just, just look, out, look out and see what God created and you could only, only imagine maybe with the kind of the scope of what it could have been. Adam and Eve ruined it all. Not only just that, but he caused what God had created to become cursed and made subject to vanity. That's what that means. It's good for nothing now. It doesn't mean it's ugly or it doesn't have any kind of purpose, but it, it can no longer serve the purpose God created it for because of sin being brought into the world. So that's kind of a part of the answer. What is this that thou hast done? <clears throat> sin continued and increased in Adam's race. But after a few generations now, God didn't wait a long time. He began to show that his power, his ability, his wisdom, and his desire to save men from their sin. <clears throat> he could, God can, can uh, display his wrath and he can save at the same time. We saw this in Noah. <clears throat> God spared not the old world. He destroyed the, in every living thing, he said, with a flood. But he, he spared Noah, <clears throat> saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And then again at Babel, <clears throat> when men got together <clears throat> and uh, decided to build a tower up to heaven to make a name for themselves, God confused and scattered the people. But out of this, the very next event is God calling Abraham, or Abram at the time, out of Ur of the Chaldees, <clears throat> from a family of idolaters. And God... In Abraham, God established an everlasting covenant through Abraham and a seed forever, and he imputed righteousness unto him. How about that? That's in this, in this world that Adam and Eve brought sin into. And then another deliverance in Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed five cities of the plains, but delivered just, that is the just man, Lot, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And then in Joseph, God put Joseph in Egypt 
to save Israel during the famine. And those uh, 70 something people came to, to Egypt to get food under the, the kind hand of Joseph, <clears throat> as well as the rest of the world. And Joseph said, but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And in Moses, a new Pharaoh rose up after Joseph that did not remember Joseph and uh, put the children of Israel to work in hard bondage. And for 400, well, it wasn't until 430 years later that God raised up Moses to deliver the children of Israel from the iron furnace. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. And in Joshua and Caleb, as the Israelites traveled through the wilderness and came to the promised land, you remember the account there that ten spies brought back an evil report? And that entire generation, Scripture says their carcasses. Remember several years ago, Brother Al made this point. It's like they didn't even have names to the Lord. Their carcasses, their, their unbelieving carcasses fell in the wilderness. But not Joshua and Caleb and the new generation, they were, by faith, they came into the promised land. So in, you see all through here, God's, God's dealing with sin, but he's saving at the same time. <clears throat> and in Babylon, the Babylonian captivity, after Israel had come into the promised land, they went uh, whoring after other gods like the nations around them, and so the Lord used Babylon to take them into captivity. And yet in that Time And in that captivity were men like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Zechariah, Haggai, Ezra, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, Joshua, and others. <clears throat> and then when the due time came, the greatest deliver, the greatest salvation, the greatest redemption, the greatest covenant, the greatest deliverance of all time came from heaven in Jesus Christ. He finished the transgression, made an end of sins, made reconciliation for iniquity, and brought in everlasting righteousness. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved through him, saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So I have some more questions for you then. <clears throat> How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Well, our, our joyful and willing presence at the table of the Lord here is our testimony and our confession to God that we are not going to neglect this great salvation. We love and honor the Father and the Son, and we partake of the bread, which is Christ's body distributed to us, and we drink of the cup, which is the New Testament in his blood. And we realize the magnitude of what Christ has done for us and the manner of the love that the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. We have the answers to a lot of questions in Scripture. I want to give you seven more questions, to be exact. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Of course, the Apostle Paul answers his questions, nay, no, 
In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. No longer are we like Adam, sinful and naked and ashamed and hiding from God. We already have abundantly more than Adam, and in the world to come, everlasting life. Now, if God should ask us, what have you done? We can say, we have believed, Amen. and we are sure that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for delivering us. We thank you for such a great salvation and for your, your love for us, for your abundant grace. We thank you for the Savior, and we pray that you would bless us as we have come to join you in the Son at this table of communion. We pray these things in his name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>